Anchors up. Sales at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I love that intro, Jared. How are you doing? <laughs> uh, you know, uh, I, I, I definitely had the 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 uh, episode branding changed on time before we started. And no, no one has any proof. Otherwise, you're like, Jared, we can just rewind. No, you can't. Because yeah, I said you gotta, so. You, you got to keep going forward. Yeah, there's only forward, guys. Forward. There is only forward. Except for what we're about to do. We're going to look in the past and look at last weekend's game here, Jared. <laughs> Boom! Transitions. <laughs> All right. This is our Collegiate Chaos episode. Uh, Monday, we went over the Scarlet and Grade, which is our Ohio State review episode. And this is our national review. Uh, here in our uh, Slipcast Discord, we always love a uh, Team Chaos moment here. And um, yeah, we'll review some games and see if there was some chaos games here or there, we, possibly <laughs> it, it could have been a lot worse from what we've seen in week one. Uh, it, it could have been a lot worse. We had we didn't have a lot of genuine chaos. We had a lot of close calls. We had some pseudo chaos. Yeah. Um, but. Not a lot of like I, I would say not a lot of proper chaos. Yeah. So let's let's go right into it here. So we'll start in the Big Ten here. Thursday, the Thursday game, Penn State heading to a night game at Purdue. Yeah. And, and, um, and Penn State and Penn State squeaked out a squeaked out a victory there, 35 to 31. I'm just gonna say this. As someone that wants Penn State to be at least somewhat good, because I do, mm -hmm. I do want Penn State to be at least somewhat good. It is seriously time to send Sean Clifford to a big red farm upstate. It, we're we're done here. It, it's kind of funny. I there, there's a couple of Penn State fans that I work with, and talking to them, and they both completely agree. They're like, you know, appreciate Clifford. Appreciate all he did, but he's been here for 12 years now. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's time time for him to move on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's time to at least start phasing in some Drew Alar. Um, man, just in the one series he played, it was some competent quarterbacking. He just, he, he, I watched I watched some of his high school stuff. Um, if by phrasing phasing in, you mean making him the full time starter, then yes. Listen, that's what I would have done. But I think that should have been the plan from day one to try and do that immediately with a true freshman might not be fair to him at this point. Feels up to me. That's what they should have done from like week one of fall camp. Yep. But that ship has already sailed. Um, yep. Yep. But yeah, it's the, the Sean Clifford era at Penn State should be should be done. Um, there were, we saw a lot of schools this offseason look at their longstanding quarterback and say. You know, maybe check out the transfer portal. We saw Bo Nix move on. We saw some <laughs> other longtime quarterbacks. And teams that were ready to move on from them. Um, Penn State should have been one of those teams. I don't know. I, I agree. I, I like I like what I saw in the brief in the brief uh, drive with Drew Aller. Really, really liked him. Just the poise he had in the pocket, stepped up. I I, I think he has a good future at Penn State. But I agree. I think. I think they need to give that give that kid some more playing time this year. But yeah, uh, Penn State wins a close one against Purdue, which. You know, they were at Purdue um, at night. Ohio State fans know how tough that can be. Uh, but uh, I would say neither team. I, I would say neither team looked all that great, if I'm being honest. 
Hey, how about Illinois and Indiana? Uh, you you skipped the backyard brawl. I'll get to that. I was going with Big Ten teams first. Well, I had them in an order on my tabs, so but fine, whatever. We we <laughs> we, we, we go forward. Indiana Indiana gets the win uh, late. I forget how much time was left, but they they get the they get the win late. Um, twenty three to twenty here. And man, I thought I could have, I thought, I thought Indiana was going to be the, probably one of the worst, if not the worst uh, Big Ten team here. But man, they, they showed a lot of toughness in this game to pull out that, that victory. Yeah, for sure. Um, this, uh, I, this always felt like a game that was going to be close to me. I think I said so during the, our uh, Friday Sloop Picks episode. Um, where we we had this as a slip pick, and I basically said it was a 50-50 ball game. Um, and that's that's how I made my pick, and I feel like it was very much a 50-50 ball game. This is one of those games where it's not so much that a team wins as much as the clock runs out, and one of the teams happened to be ahead at that point. Yep. Uh, the other Big Ten game here, Iowa. Iowa and South Dakota State, seven to three, where Iowa wins. But no touchdowns. even though they scored seven points, Jared, there was no touchdown scored in this game. So you may be thinking I, to yourself, like, hold on, wait, how do you get to seven? Yeah. Without a touchdown. We're we are for now on referring to a field goal and two safeties as an Iowa touchdown. Yeah, that's that. That is an Iowa touchdown. That that's that is seven and, and, points. And it took Iowa all style game to get to. It took them all game to get to that because it was three points in the first quarter, none in the second safety in the third safety in the fourth. Yeah. Uh, by the way, you want to talk about a punter winning a game. That's what happened in this game. Um, Iowa's punter absolutely won this game. All seven of those points came from the punting team, essentially. Um, I mean, you almost have to with the safeties, right? Yeah, he out Murko'd yeah. Murko. Um, yeah, th- this was the most, this was peak Iowa. Absolutely it, it, peak it Iowa. It was peak Iowa. But yeah. not, not a great, not a great showing, if we're being honest, for, no. for Iowa. No, absolutely not. All right, here you go, Jared. You can go back to your uh, first tab or second tab or whatever you have here. Okay. Pittsburgh and West Virginia. The return of the backyard brawl. Now, I am I am from the Ohio River Valley area. I'm not a WVU fan or a Pitt fan, but I know people who are. Uh, this game was missed. This was a very, very missed football game. Um, when when Pitt moved to the ACC and West Virginia moved to the Big Twelve, um, this was a this was a greatly missed and mourned rivalry. Um, so to see them play uh, means a lot to a lot of people. And again, even as me, someone who's not a fan of either of these teams, it, it meant a lot to me because of just again, what it meant to so many people that I do know. Um, outside of all of that, I thought Slovis looked really good for Pitt. Uh, I thought JT Daniels looked pretty good for West Virginia. I think Slovis had a bit more talent to work with. Um, I walked away and like, it's week one. So we really like, what, what, we don't necessarily have anything to com- to compare these teams against at this point. Um mm-hmm. But I walked away somewhat impressed with both of these teams. Uh, now that maybe maybe they were just both not great. I, I don't know, but uh, it was a lot of fun to watch. It was a very even football game. Pitt comes out on top. Um, Pitt and basically as expected, Pitt was favored by about a touchdown. They won by a touchdown. So yeah, but again. Uh, I got walked away from this really impressed with Daniels and Slovis and Pittsburgh might still have something. All 
All right. Uh, all right. <laughs> These next two games, Jared. We're, we're going to we're going to the state of North Carolina. What, what's what what was happening there, Kyle? Uh, our our resident our resident our, uh, North Carolina expert. Our uh, our uh, uh, team chaos was trying to go to both ends of the state here. <laughs> trying to go to Boone, North Carolina and go in Greenville, North Carolina here. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll go to Boone first. North Carolina and Appy State. Now, you, you, you may sit here, Jared, and you, you may sit here and look at the, look at the stats here and be like, oh man, yeah. one of the teams scored 40 points in one quarter. Surely that team won it, right? No. <laughs> uh, yeah, Appy State uh, gave North Carolina everything they had. Um, yeah. Yes. Yes, Austin. Appy and UNC was the antithesis of Iowa and South Dakota State. Yeah, absolutely. Um, they they stole all the points, so there was none left for Iowa. Um, yeah, defense very much optional in this game. Um, I, I walked away mostly unimpressed with both of these teams. Um, it, North Carolina I, has had some good teams lately. This year's not supposed to be one of those teams. Um, what was the final score? 63 to 61. Um, which amazingly enough did not feature in overtime. Um, what was it? Was that a, um, was that an FBS record that in scoring? most points in in one quarter oh it wasn't i thought i saw something that it was or 62 points was scored in a single quarter or, or are you talking about just appy scoring 40 in a quarter yeah they had a combined austin a combined 62 points in the fourth quarter Yeah, it, it was it was a stupid football game. It was a very stupid football game. I I'm not uh, even going to bring up the uh the stats on that. That's just <laughs> uh, that's just stupid. And then on the other side there, Green The record Green was 63. Uh combined combined in a quarter court uh, combined in a quarter Austin, is that uh this was 62, so they just missed it. Yeah. So going to the other side, going going over to Greenville, North Carolina, where East Carolina hosted NC State, and NC State pulled out a victory, twenty-one to twenty, a one-point victory. Now, now I'll, I'll I'll sit here and and I'll say maybe maybe this NC State not as good as what we what we thought they might have been here, or maybe it's. Kind of like Ohio State's offense in a way. It they struggled. They, they had their week one um, issues, and maybe they get them fixed down the road. But not not a good showing for NC State in that first week. Yeah. Um, again, ECU's had some good has had some good teams over the past couple years. I really don't know if this team was expected to be one of them. Um, NC State was favored by nearly two touchdowns coming into this game. Um, there's just not a lot to be excited about here. Um, I, I know we were, in a, you know, again, it's week one. Let's not overreact to week one. But I think we were expecting big things out of Leary and 17-33 for 211 yards is not it. Nope, not it at all. Because even when Eastern Carolina has been good in the past, it's not been because of their defense. Um, I, yeah, if Kyle and I both jumped on the NC state preseason hype train and I'm, I'm second guessing that a lot right now. Yep. Same here. Same here. I mean, you, you see how well, uh, Devin Leary can, can throw the ball, but man, you, you go 50% passing in that game. Yeah, not not, not good. Not good. Well, 
we'll see who, who do they play next up. <laughs> yeah, they definitely should be having a lot better game. <laughs> NC State plays Charleston Southern. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's that's a scrimmage, essentially. <laughs> that is. All right. Um. Oh, we forgot a, a Big Ten team here, Jared. Kyle, like most people, forgot for a second that Rutgers plays for the Big Ten. <laughs> Well, you had them way down here. I had to scroll down and then I saw Rutgers here. Really? You're going to blame me? Yes. You didn't have Rutgers near the top there. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm blaming you. <laughs> Rutgers, Rutgers pull out a win in the fourth quarter against Boston College, 22 to 21. Yes, Buckeye Zach. <laughs> Rutgers wins the East. <laughs> yeah, not so much. Uh, this this is a good solid win for for Rutgers. Um, that that's it. Just you know, congratulations to them. You know, and I I think this is a this is a team with a with an okay amount with a Rutgers amount of upward trajectory. Uh, and they win their opening game against a. You you could call them a better program in Boston College. Um, so we got we have positive trending, some positive trending for for Rutgers. And I think that's really all you can ask for for Rutgers. All right, um, next game's here. We'll, uh, which one do you want to do next? Do you want to do the uh, the the Oregon Georgia game here? Oh, uh, yeah. Oregon, Georgia. Um, I need to ask a question. And Go if someone it. someone could maybe pass this along to the good people uh, in the Oregon Athletic Department. All right. Who saw Bo Nix on the transfer portal and said, you know what? Yeah. What if we brought in Bo Nix? Bringing in Bo Nix gives really strong i can fix him energy <laughs> it does <laughs> yeah 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 i know he's a cheater and i know that he doesn't have a job and i know he still lives with his mom i can fix him i can fix him but next really taking our pac-12 mantra seriously i can yeah. fix him he went 21 for 37 for 173 yards and, and, two, and two interceptions and no touchdowns. Yeah. Strong, strong. I can fix some energy. Oh, hold, hold that thought, Buckeye Zach. I, I don't think Pac-12 is dead. Pa I, I mean, it's dying. It's dying, but it's not quite dead yet. But yeah. Uh, I, 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 we'll find out as the, as the year goes along, how good of a win this is for Georgia here. But I mean, that's, that's, that's solid. You, you win 49 to three over Oregon here. Yeah. That's, that's a, that's a great statement for Georgia. And, and it's it a great like statement on Bo Nix too. <laughs> uh, this, man, that Georgia lost a lot, but man, they, they, didn't seem like they missed a beat in this game here. So, well, no, George, I've said it a thousand times. I'll say it a thousand and one. There's a huge gap between the top three teams in the country and everyone else. George is one of those teams. Bama is one of those teams. Ohio State's one of those teams. Everyone else is fighting for that last playoff spot. Yep. All right. Uh, Arkansas. And Cincinnati, speaking of getting that last uh, <laughs> that last playoff spot, Arkansas and Cincinnati. I'm not I'm not I'm not co-signing that transition. Ar Arkansas ended up being <laughs> Cincinnati 31 to 24. I really honestly have to say this. I'm really proud of Cincinnati, Luke Fickle and, and all of them. Um because I, I really didn't expect them to even play this well against Arkansas. Um, I, 
said it a few times this offseason. I did not expect them to be able to reload to the extent that they reloaded. Um, now, may- maybe maybe I'm fooled. Maybe maybe Arkansas is not as good as as they're supposed to be. Um, but I really thought Arkansas was going to slaughter Cincinnati because Cincinnati just lost so much talent. And again, they don't recruit at a, you know, a, a big power three level. So I just kind of didn't. Didn't expect them to be able to hold their own against a team as good as Arkansas. Mm-hmm. And they did. So again, maybe we're maybe we're all fooled. Maybe Arkansas is not as good as they're supposed to be. But um I you know, I'm I'm very proud of what Cincinnati's doing right now. Yep, yep. Uh Fick is building a good program. Uh Cincinnati held their own. Um sour grapes. What, what do I have sour grapes for? UC shows how great uh there's no sour grapes for me. Um if Day loses to Michigan again this year, would you want him to be gone and happy with Fick coming in? Not going to happen. I, I question voided. Not going to happen. Um, yeah, but I, I, I'm nixing your question based off of the premise. But I, I don't have to accept the premise just because you type it. All right, moving on to the next game here, Jared. Utah and Florida. Yeah, um, this is. I would say the only legitimate. Like truly legitimate moment of team chaos this week. Yeah, um, we saw really good teams beat other really good teams and maybe Florida's much better than not being ranked, which is what they were coming into this game. Um, you know, they they got a a solid win against Utah, who returned a lot of the same talent that we saw last year in the Rose Bowl. Yeah, so and, and a, and a name that everybody everybody's talking about here. Anthony Richardson. Yeah. He played he played really well in, in that game. And yeah, it'll be Definitely, I think a lot of people are going to keep a closer eye on him um, throughout the year now. I, I had am a, had a really good showing this game. I am curious if modern football, if a quarterback that is as run heavy as Richardson is, still works and still works like on a national championship level in college football. Mm-hmm. I don't feel like we've seen run first quarterbacks. It can work as long as you can throw it enough. I I want the guy who who looks to throw first and foremost. I I don't I don't. Yeah, uh, I I just don't know if it if a run first quarterback can win a national title in twenty twenty two. Yeah, right, I love a game. rollout and throw quarterback. Yeah, that's fine. The rollout and throw quarterback is is fine. I'm talking about, yeah, like pocket mobility is fine. A quarterback who's athletic, like C.J. Stroud or um, Young, is athletic, sure. But a quarterback that looks to th- run the ball as like if it's a one, oh, my one read isn't open. I'm going to run the ball. I just don't think that shit works in college football anymore. Not not at a national level. Nope. All right. Next game here. Houston and UTSA. This is a fun this game, game. This game went into triple overtime and Houston pull out the victory 37 to 35. Because, you know, you got to go for two. Starting on the third overtime. Yeah, um, I think, by the way, they should just be forced to go for two in overtime, period. Why why kick extra points in overtime? They should just be forced to go for two. Yeah, we, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that. Yeah, it, overtime 
extended overtimes lead to injuries and it leads to degraded performance the next week. Uh, we Overtime should be tried to be made as short as possible. And in doing that, I, I and I think an easy way to do that would just be to force two point conversions. Uh, Austin, there's no disagree there. Um, it's it's fact. It leads to injuries and it leads to degre- degraded performance the next week. If you're involved, look, look. So it's. It's not it's not worth it. It's not worth it from a player health standpoint. It's not worth it from a degradation of the next week performance standpoint. Yep. Um, but yeah, this was a fun game. I don't know how good either of these teams are. Houston was supposed to be one of the premier group of five teams this year. Um, and so either San Antonio was underrated or Houston's overrated. I don't know. Uh, but this was a fun game. It was a lot you know, of fun. Fun fact, you know what UTSA stands for? Two point conversions back and forth don't tell you who's the better team. That's not what I'm saying. No, 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 Austin, you misunderstand. If you score a touchdown. That was for Jared Austin. I, I know. I know. Okay. If you score a touchdown then you must go for a two point conversion there. You shouldn't be able to kick extra points is what I'm saying. All right. Do you know what? Okay. Uh, okay. Austin you know and I, what? everyone, everyone, Austin and I agree now. All right. You know what UTSA is? It uh, should be the rule though. Austin is my point. UTSA's mascot is uh, a road runner. It is a road runner. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know why you're acting like I've never heard of UTSA before. Okay. All right. Uh, you have your Central <laughs> Central Michigan and Oklahoma State. Now, th- this one this one is really interesting because of how good of defense Oklahoma State was last year. Yeah. But Oklahoma State um, led up 44 points to win by 14, 58 to 44. Yeah, uh, so a thing to be aware of here is making sure that Knowles trains his replacement at Ohio State. (laughs) Something to be very aware of here. Because whatever it was, it didn't stick around. The defense gave up a lot later in the game with backups. That's fair. That is true. They gave up 22 in the fourth quarter. Yep, that is very true. All right, and last game here, Jared. um, I guess, yeah, another team chaos moment here. Kind of. Oh, I mean, Virginia Virginia Tech doesn't get that honor. Just so we're clear, Virginia Tech doesn't get that honor. They were never going to be even a relevant force within the ACC this year. So, no, I'm I'm not. Listen, I I do not want to water down team chaos. Uh, Virginia Tech doesn't doesn't get the honor of being team chaos. Um, right. But they they do lose to Old Dominion. Um, Yikes! Old Dominion. Yikes! Not not a good look. Not a good look for. Also, for Virginia Tech. Virginia's Virginia Tech's mascot is a is literally a turkey. Uh, I I believe it's it's a hokey. Like I, this is kind of the, uh, it's a, it's a turkey, Zach. It's a turkey. <laughs> I, well, but it's, it's, um, it's the same thing with the terrapins, right? Like what's a terrapin? It's a turtle, but it's not a turtle though. I know, but it's a fucking turtle. It's the same thing. You, you, you know, you know what the, in their very first year, you know what Virginia tech was, um, their former nickname was. Uh, what is that? It, it's it goes along with a turkey. Kyle, you're just gonna have to tell me. <laughs> the gobblers. <laughs> wow, the gobblers. Uh, I'll take a hokey over the gobblers. <laughs> yeah, they didn't even make up a name that didn't sound like a turkey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
All right. Uh, those are all the games, Jared. Uh, those were all the games that we cared to talk about this week. And even then, I feel like we were scraping the bottom of the barrel. So, uh, <laughs> um, you know, it's it was it was week one. Uh, you know, there were some teams not playing and some teams playing some uh, some real Utah State sort of teams. And uh, at least next week is Alabama, Texas. We do have Alabama, Texas next week. Um, yeah, what what we, do we have on the schedule as a whole next week? What what what, what do yeah. we have? All right, let's look here. I mean, Alabama, Texas. That's that's the big one here. Uh, scrolling down, scrolling down. Austin says Oklahoma, and Nebraska. That's fun. Well, here's an interesting one. I I think it's should be a blowout, but you saw what Appy State did to UNC, but maybe Appy State and Texas A and M. I, I expect it to be a blowout, but something to keep an eye on. Uh, you know. Tennessee uh, and Kyle, Pitt, Tennessee, Kyle, Tennessee and Pittsburgh play. North Carolina, Georgia State. You want to talk about some upset potential? Uh, Georgia State's not bad. Uh, let's see. Kentucky and Florida play. USC, USC. Stanford already, Austin? USC Stanford plays. That is a 730 ABC kickoff game. That might be fun. And uh, Tennessee Baylor and, and Baylor and BYU. Did you already say Tennessee Pittsburgh? I did. Okay. That's that, and that'll Baylor and, that'll make it on Baylor, the slip picks. Baylor and BYU. Uh, I don't I don't know if I care about Baylor or BYU. All right. I, I think those are really the only games to really, really look it's at. It's not a, it's not a solid week. Uh, Kentucky, Florida. I said that. I said I, that. I, I know you said it, but I didn't say it. Okay. All right. Uh, I think that's <laughs> it, Jared. Uh, Kentucky going to get boat raced. I, I think so. I think so. I mean, maybe not boat raced, but they'll they'll win. Yep. Or lose, rather. Um, you know what I'm trying to say. Florida will win. OK, uh, that's it, Kyle. That's the end of the show. Everyone check out uh, YouTube.thesloopcast.com. Check out shorts.thesloopcast.com. Both of those take you to YouTube. The shorts one will take you directly to our uh, one minute highlight page. Um. This was Collegiate Chaos, by the way. Uh, this is our Tuesday show, uh, Scarlet and Grade, uh, which is spelled G-R-A-D-E. Uh, Scarlet and Grade is on Monday. That's uh, our Ohio State review. On Wednesday, we do Sloop Cats Only. That's a fun little Patreon-only episode that we do for our uh, financial backers. Um, Thursday, we do... Uh, know your enemy that's when we preview the upcoming ohio state game and on friday we do the sloop picks that is where we pick uh seven games or six additional games uh on top of the ohio state game uh against the spread uh speaking of kyle uh after one week of sloop picks i have a two-game lead over you and everyone else in our online sloop picks The season's young, Jared. The season I'm just, is young. I was getting, if and I might have to go back and watch the episode and take some screenshots. Y'all, there were some people giving me some shit in the chat about my sloop picks. And uh, where are y'all at now? Oh, that's right. You're in second place at best. That's where you're at now. You're still here. Austin says, I'm still here. You're still in the bottom of the league. You're still in the league, sure, but you're at the bottom. <laughs> oh, I'm just. Hey, 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 look, hey, look, guys. It, all the other times that I beat Jared, I, I always direct it at Jared, not to you all. It was always to Jared. Huh? But, not, but now you see Jared. 
Yeah. One week, only one week up at the top, uh-huh. and you you see you see how he acts here. That's right. You you know how I act? Act like a winner. Because I'm winning. This is how winners act. Top G. That's right. Thank you, Austin. All right, that's it. That's all I got, Jared. Hey, by the way, Austin, since you're down there spamming those Team Kyle emotes, I will point out that the only reason Kyle is in second place and not third place is because he picked Notre Dame. Kyle has blood on his hands, is what I'm trying to say. Kyle has blood on his hands. Whatever, Jared. Whatever. I would have gone six for seven if I was Kyle and I picked Notre Dame. (laughs) Kyle has blood on his hands, but you stabbed the person. No, he stabbed. He stabbed Brutus. At least I picked Ohio State. (laughs) All right, Jared. Go ahead and um, head us out here. All right. Uh, did you not have a Kyle's corner? I don't. We, we, covered, fine. Pr- we, we covered pretty much everything here. Oh, oh, funny, funny thing. Um, our former, former Buckeye transfer, uh, uh, Quinn Ewers. Did you see about this? I did, but please continue. After, after their football game, Quinn Ewers goes to find his, uh, his car. And he's like, huh, I could have sworn I parked it here only to find out his his car was towed during the game. Where the hell were you parking? Apparently, wherever the fuck he wanted. Apparently. (laughs) How does a player's car get towed? How does that happen? The tow zone, apparently. (sighs) University parking is shit, but he's the starting quarterback. Like, I feel like someone should be watching his back. They probably didn't know it's his car. No, I'm talking about like someone with the team should have like had his back. Like, oh, hey, Quinn, don't park there. Where the fuck was he parked? I don't know the lay. I don't know the layout of of Austin, Texas, but nor should you. (laughs) All right, that's it, Jared. That's that's all I got for today's episode. We will catch you all Thursday for your know your enemy. Yep, tonight's ending music um, will once again be. Settle your scores. Settle your scores is a Cincinnati-based pop punk band. They're a lot of fun. Uh, so uh, with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, settle your scores.